Um, okay, a few things. Um, first of all, uh, <coughs> I, would, I do want to apologize. I, I felt that uh, I, got, I probably didn't do a good job tonight of keeping composed. Um, I hit the scores table three or four times, and I don't like doing that. I told our guys I'm going to try to do better about that. Um, I promise you that I will try, but it's probably not going to uh, hold true because I'm sure I'll knock it three or four more times throughout the season, maybe per game. I don't know, but I got a little frustrated just because I understood the importance of this game and the hangover effect is, is to say that this could be a trap game. I mean, this is a team that, first of all, a veteran coach who's won a lot of games, and secondly, a team with tons of athletes. And, and if you start believing and you're reading your own press clippings from the previous morning, sort of say, uh, you have a tendency to have a hangover. And uh, uh, you just came in and we got the lead. We were up 17 or 19, and we just thought, hey, the game's over, and we could let up. And this is a great opportunity for us to learn that when you have a team down, you've got to keep the team down. And winning is hard. I know everyone's tired of me saying it. Everybody's tired of me saying it, but I really mean it. Winning is so hard every single game. And with a young team, we are going to be a little up and down at times because we are young, we're inexperienced, we're working through some things. And uh, But the bottom line is there's nothing better than being 3-0. and It beats 2-1. and And I'm so proud of the guys because we got the W. Fans came out, over 16,000. Thank you for that. Uh, and it's great to be 3-0. You, you, you had a lineup in once they took the lead and stayed with that lineup for a while, and they took control of the game again. And then early on in the game, you maybe made a substitution or two and got out to the big lead. It seemed like in the middle, both the first half and the second half, you were making a lot of changes like you've done through the first couple of games, and the rhythm wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. But the other thing, I was, I, I, I was probably a little wary of for the long term of the game that I, I recognize that because of the lateness of the previous mm -hmm. game that I, I want to make sure that we kept fresh. We had the lead and I felt we weren't going to have any drop off when we made some substitutions and it wasn't about much about the rhythm is that when we made some substitutions and some different lineups we kind of let our guard down instead of keeping it on the on the gas pedal and that's something that I will go back watch the film see where that went um, and I got to look at that and see you know if there was a situation where um, where guys were playing well and I maybe should have kept them in a little longer but again that's a feel and I was maybe looking for the long term of it uh, for the game thinking I want to make sure that we keep bodies fresh have them wear down the opponent and keep us being fresh as we continue to go but towards the towards the end there the I mean Will Barton saved us with a couple threes there's no doubt about that Chris Crawford saved us with his defense on shutting down Pratt who kicked our butt all night Weston Witherspoon 24 and 12 came up big uh, and Tark Black. Those four guys really played well for us and our free throw shooting. We were 29 of 35. But here's the bottom line. On, on Monday night or Tuesday morning, you look at it, Charles Carmooch, Joe Jackson, Antonio Barton, I mean, maybe probably Wesley helped us win the game. I mean, those four were a big thing. Will Bar Barton was not a factor at all. Was not mm -hmm. a factor at all. Tonight's game was totally different. So that shows some good signs of our team that we have different options. And you, you're not we're not limited just to one or two guys. Are you trying to... Uh you know, send some messages with uh, Will Coleman and Angel because neither one of them seem to be doing what you want them to do right now. Well, you know, I, Will Coleman is one of the most nicest people in the world. I love Angel Garcia. I think Angel Garcia is going to be so good. I really do. I think he's going to be so good. And I just think it's some of it right now. It's for Angel, he's just kind of <coughs> got to get in a flow. Um, you know, really, you look at it, this is really like his freshman year. His, his first real freshman year, he didn't obviously play, and he didn't really practice because he got injured. Last year, he got injured, so he didn't practice. And then when he came back to play, we did not practice him at all. We only <coughs> let him play in games to, to keep him fresh so he could uh, just be healthy for the game. So this is his first really year that he's played. And in the games, he didn't run any plays. We just said, when you're just pick and shoot threes. And so for him, this is new to him. Teams know him. And he's just got to kind of get within the system. Um, and then, so that's going to be a learning process. But Angel Garcia is very, very good. I have great confidence in Angel. And I have great confidence in Will Coleman. I mean, he's a senior. But production is where it comes down to. We've got to have production. Um, and then I've got, to, I've got to continue to do a better job of getting the most production out of those guys, too. So if they're not producing, I'm not going to blame just them. I'm going to – I've got to look at myself as well, too. What can we do to get more production out of them?